Hello and welcome to episode 80 of the Giddy Knits podcast. As always, I'm Helen and I'm coming to you from Dundee in Scotland, where I live with my husband Tom and my two boys, Arthur, who is now seven, and Jasper, who is now four. Um, today is Monday the 30th of November and if anyone doesn't know, I am the yarn dyer behind Giddy Yarns and this is my crafting podcast. That was a pretty good introduction, wasn't it? <laughs> Um, hello and welcome to everyone that watches regularly and comes back and hello to anyone that is new and checking out the podcast for the first time. I hope you enjoy it. What have I got to share with you today? Right, I'm just checking my show notes. So I start off with a little bit of an ad mini section at the beginning as always. I've got a couple of finished objects to share. I've got a couple of works in progress that I want to talk about. I've also got a new cast on although it's only very new so there's not a lot of it to share. Um, and then I wanted to share a teeny tiny bit of blanket progress before I chat about my plans for advent knitting and then I was going to finish off finish off with a shop news section um, as well so that is the plan right let's get into the admin section shall we so first of all vlogmas <laughs> um, you may have noticed I I'm not 100% sure quite how these videos will go up on YouTube and in what order, but you may have noticed another video up at the same time as the podcast. And that is because it is now Vlogmas. Vlogmas recording has started and I will be uploading daily vlogs throughout Advent to my YouTube channel featuring everything, crafts, um, work, family stuff, festivity stuff, all of that kind of thing in the lead up to Christmas. We love Vlogmas. The boys are really excited about it. Jasper's actually excited about it this year. Last year was a bit of a challenge because he didn't really want to be involved at all. Arthur loves Vlogmas, so he's very excited about it. Um, so yeah, that is happening. Vlogmas has begun. Um, I don't know what else to say about that. That's Vlogmas. Um, and a quick reminder again, the Giddy Yarns make along, the, our ongoing make along is still running over in the Ravelry group, so you can keep entering your Giddy Yarns finished objects over there. All the information is in the drop down box underneath this video, so you can find out all the information there. Um, if you can't access Ravel, Ravel, bleh, Ravelry, we are also running it on Instagram, so again, all the details are down below. Let's get into some knitting, shall we? I have got two finished objects. I have finished two gifts. Um, I'm not going to talk about who they're for, just in case anybody is watching this, but um, I finished the thin hat, which is this one here. I'll pop it on, I'll pop it on actually. Um, there we go. I finished the thin hat. This is my second version, if you've been watching for a while. Um, and this one is knit out of... Um, two of my colourways so this is Hoarfrost and the blue is Mistral um, and these are both on my Merino DK base um, and it's a really fun really simple pattern um, I wish I'd grabbed the other one actually um, I'll share I'll share it during Vlogmas the two of them together at some point but I wish I'd grabbed the other one that I knit in the alternate colours so I could have shown you um, this is a pattern by Amanda Long um, and it's actually a charity pattern so if you purchase it then um all of the proceeds i'm pretty sure go to i'm just double checking on the pattern excuse the noise yeah all of the proceeds are uh, donated to cancer research uk um and it's a brilliant pattern it's a really really easy to follow there are two versions as well um i think i did version one both times um but there is a slightly different version as well that has you do slightly different um contrasts basically um, but it, it is an absolutely fantastic pattern. Um, it's a really simple stripe with um, slip stitch detail. Really fun. I want to put a bobble on this. Um, like, a, not a bobble, a pom-pom. I want to put a pom-pom on this. Um, but I can't find my pom-pom maker. Um, so at some point, if that turns up before Christmas, I will put a pom-pom on this one. Um, but I'm not sure. And I've still got... A fair amount of these um, I had 200 gram balls of DK um, and I've knit two hats out of it and I could definitely get another hat out of this as well oh I've dropped one um, I could definitely get another hat out of this or something so I don't know they'll pop in my pop in my stash for a little bit until I decide what to do with them but yeah my first finished object and another Christmas gift off the needles so that is reassuring 
<laughs> I'm starting to panic in that um, it is December tomorrow and I am still knitting Christmas gifts and I want to knit Advent things as well. But we will have to see what happens. Right, I have got one more Christmas gift finished. Um, and that is the cowl I was knitting. So this is a variation on the dance like no one's watching cowl. I haven't blocked this yet and it does need a block because it's curling up at the bottom a little bit. Um, but yeah, this is a variation on the dance like no one's watching cowl, which is a pattern by Lindsay Tranter, who is Stitch Create Love pretty much everywhere, I think, YouTube, Instagram and Etsy. Um, and yeah, it's a really fun pattern. It's inspired by ballet dancers um, and it just features a really simple lace pattern. The pattern is written for DK or fingering weight plus mohair. I have used um, fingering weight held double, which has made a thicker fabric. I was also slightly worried about the fact that I wouldn't have enough yarn doing it that way because basically I only had 50 grams of um, yarn because I had a 100 gram skein which I held double. So I omitted the first section. Um, the pattern's written in five or six sections. Um, one, two, three, four, five, six sections. Um, yeah, the pattern is written in um, six sections. Sorry, I've just had a text message from the school saying, Arthur has been marked down as absent today. And I'm like, oh yes, because I emailed everybody and talked to everybody. You should know he's off. Stop ringing me and telling me he's off. <sighs> anyway. <laughs> I explained last week's episode why Arthur is off school. Um, uh, right, what am I talking about with this? Um, I only had 50 grams basically of yarn because I had a 100 gram skein and I was holding it double. So I omitted the first section um, and it just about worked. I had, well, it did work. I had this much yarn left. Um, I haven't weighed how much this is, um, but I think it's, it's about five grams of yarn is what I had left. I was getting towards the cast off and I was starting to panic, I'll admit. Um, but we had success. So yeah, there we go. And if you're watching, Lindsay, your dance like no one's watching cowl can be knitted with 100 grams of yarn if you admit the first section. <laughs> um, so this needs a really, really good block and um, then it will be ready for its recipient for Christmas. And the yarn I used don't know if the sparkle will show up. Um, I don't think the sparkle is quite showing up here. But Arthur dyed this yarn um, a little while ago. He's dyed, he dyed some for Christmas presents for some of our family members. And this is one of the ones he dyed. It's really, really pretty, isn't it? Came out really nicely. So yeah, another finished object. Um, as I said, this one needs a good block. So I will have to do that at some point this week, hopefully. Right, works in progress. I have been working on my Agrin mitts, um, which you will have seen. Um, they are both actually kind of off the needles at the moment. So the Agrin mitts are a free pattern by, um, I've written the name down, Law Mar Marmia. Um, and it's a really fun sort of simple cable pattern. There we go, for fingerless mitts. Um, there's the cable and then they are ribbed there is kind of a two by two rib um, on the main part of the mitten and then you've got the cable panel up the front of the hand and then the thumb if I put the other one on it's actually got a thumb um, the thumb is just a stocking stitch thumb um, really really good the pattern is free um, I did talk uh, last episode or the episode before it is one of those patterns that really, really requires you to read the pattern first. Um, there's a lot of kind of do this, but also do this and also do this and do this at the same time, <laughs> which is a little bit confusing if you just kind of throw yourself straight into it. But once you've read the pattern and you've worked out kind of what you're supposed to be doing at the same time, it is it is fine and it is well written. But it, it's one of those patterns that you really do need to read first. But yeah, as you can see, I have very, very nearly got two finished mitts. I just need to do the thumb on this one. Um, and these are a gift, again, for my, um, for Jasper's nursery teacher. She always comments on um, how lovely his hand knits are and how she wishes she could knit and how beautiful the colours are um, and all of this kind of thing. And I just thought, you know what, let's make her a little pair of mittens. Um, 
what else do I need to tell you about these? The yarn, I've mentioned the yarn in the past, but the yarn that I have used for these um, is my 1980s Nostalgia Club colourway. Um, and this is the Shell Suit colourway. I really like how it knits up. It's really fun and colourful. Um, and I've got it on the Stellina base. I don't, again, I don't know if you can quite see the sparkle. I just had whatever spare I had left from the club. <laughs> so these should be finished by well hopefully i'll get them finished today but certainly they should be finished this week what else did i have as a work in progress um my campsite cardi i haven't brought up to show you this week because i've only added about an inch to it um and it seemed a bit pointless to share that little progress um but i have been working on it it will probably take a little bit of a back seat again over um december but I don't know, I'd like to get it finished this year, but I can't see that happening with it being so close to the end of the year. So maybe that will be a January whip. I'll pull it out in January and clear off the needles then. Um, but I also, I have been working on my Advent Garland. Um, now I mentioned last week about how I was going to block these and I was asking sort of what you recommended with regards to blocking them. And I picked up some kind of blocking mats. These, these are kids play mats um i actually got these for i think they were six pounds i did order them on amazon i think they were like six pounds i don't know how many i got they're all stuck up on the top shelf um it might have been 10 something like that um a reasonable amount um and they were yeah really cheap but they do the job um so i what i've done is i have blocked some of them um, but I did a bit of a test run because a couple of you mentioned that instead of using spray starch, you can actually use a mix of craft glue or PVA glue um, and water and block them in that. And that helps kind of um, starch them out a little bit. So I tried that. So what I did is I blocked two um, squares. These are squares. This is an unblocked one. These are squares that I crocheted up when I was making my Battenberg blanket which got turned into a Battenberg cushion. But you'll notice I did these ones slightly wrong. Um, so these have ended up spare because I did the wrong pattern. This is the pattern that I was using for Arthur's blanket as opposed to the pattern that should have been used for the Battenberg blanket. But I was working on them both at the same time and then I just ended up doing these squares wrong. Um, so I'd kind of kept them because I didn't really know what to do with them and I didn't want to throw them away. But basically, long story short, um, I've blocked a couple of them using slightly different methods. I blocked this one out slightly more thoroughly than this one, so it's come out a little bit bigger. But this one I used kind of quite a small amount of glue in the water, and then this one I used a lot of glue in the water. And this one, I think, is what I'm going to go with. This one is quite crispy, um, which is fine, but it is, it, it's just, I don't know, it's just not very pleasant to touch. Um, whereas this one is still, it's still going to hold its shape, definitely, but it is a little bit um, less crispy. So I, <laughs> I don't have very many pins. And obviously stars have five points, which means they need five pins per star. And because I'm using the glue and water, I didn't want to stack the stars when I was blocking them because I was worried that they were going to stick to each other. Um, so basically, I can only block eight stars at a time. <laughs> so I've got 48 stars that need blocking but I can only block eight stars at a time. So this is gonna take me a little while, but I think these ones are dry now. Um, but yeah, I basically soaked them in a little bit of glue and water mixture and pinned them out on the board. And should we find out how well it's worked, shall we? Let's take one of these out. Ah, stuck to the pin. Um, and there we go, we have one blocked star. And I think for my purposes, that's gonna be fine. And of course, the nice thing is that if by next year this is really worn off and it's not keeping its shape particularly well, then I can always re-block them. I can always soak them with extra glue and water and stretch them back out again. Um, but for the moment, I think that will be fine. So basically, I need to block all of these and then I will be joining them with a big chain stitch um, and hopefully they will go on our Christmas tree. So there we go. Christmas stars. Um... But yeah, that is the progress on that at the moment. Still got a lot to do for it, but at least I now know what I'm doing and it's not too not too much of an issue. It's just going to be a slow process because I don't have enough pins. Right. What's next? New cast on. 
um, this one. I have also, this is another Christmas gift, um, but this is a really simple Christmas gift that shouldn't take too much time because it's relatively simple, but I have cast on a cowl. Um, this is a gift that has been requested um, by my dad, and if he's watching this, then that's slightly bizarre, so don't be watching, Dad. Um, <laughs> but I, he just wanted a really simple cowl. I knit one for Jasper out of... Um, the advent calendar, the Goody Yarns advent calendar for this year, I um, was trying to test out the order of the colours and I knit him a simple cowl while I was doing that. Um, and my dad really liked it when he saw it. So he has requested something very similar for Christmas. So I basically am following, kind of following the Land of Sweets pattern, but without the pattern. So basically, and I'm not even doing that. Um, the, I cast on 130 stitches instead of 150 stitches because I ended up playing yarn chicken. Um, but then I'm just going to knit it in stocking stitch until it gets to a length that I like and then I'll add another eight rows of rib on the other end. That's basically what I'm doing. It's really, really simple. But the yarn, this is the yarn. Again, this is another yarn that Arthur dyed. Um, so it should be really, really fun. It's knitting up quite nice. It's going to be a bit stripy, probably a bit poorly, but good fun. Um, and I think it'll be really nice for my dad to have a cowl made out of yarn that Arthur dyed specifically for him. So that is the next Christmas gift that is in progress. Um, but it's a really nice easy one because it's one that I can just pick up whenever I've got two minutes and just do a couple of rounds on it. Now that I am on the stocking stitch section, it's just literally a massive sock, isn't it? Round and round and round and round and round. So that's that new cast on. What else was I going to share? Blanket progress. I'm kind of prattling through this, aren't I? Sorry, I feel like I'm going really, really fast, but I've got quite a lot to do today. And Arthur's still home. Tom's taking a half day. So he's with Arthur at the moment, but he's got some meetings and then he's going to take the afternoon off. Um, but Arthur's actually going to be off for a few more days this week than we were expecting. And I've got the shop update on Saturday and I still got so many stripes to get wound for it. And I'm also trying to dye all the yarn for um, the Christmas Eve boxes. Um, but I was supposed to be all set up to dye yarn in my garage, which is one of the things that we've been trying to do um, in the last week. But the burners that I had ordered that were supposed to arrive on Saturday didn't arrive on Saturday. And we're still waiting for them to arrive. So I've now had to move extra stuff back into the kitchen and to die in the kitchen. And yeah, there's just a lot going on and I'm a bit busy and I know that I need to get on with work today, but I still wanted to really sit down and record a podcast because uh, anyway, but now I feel like I'm like ah, rushing through it. Anyway, right. Blanket progress. I have added another square to my mild mayhem blanket. Um, here it is. This is the new square that I have added. And you haven't seen this in a while, but I'd forgotten how much I'd actually done of it. We've got five squares along the top and two squares along the bottom. Um, so this, I call this my mild mayhem blanket. And um, if you're a bit new to the podcast, you may not have seen this. But basically what I am doing is I have got two magic knot balls. Although these are getting a bit small now. I do have two more giant magic knot balls whoops um and these contain the scraps of the scraps like you know when you get those kind of three grams left over once you've used the yarn in every single project you could think of um that then goes into these um and they are yeah magic knots i've left the ends quite long and i crochet the ends in as i go to reinforce the magic knot um, and basically what I am doing is I am just making a big granny square. So this is 11 rounds with the yarn from two magic knot balls held double. Um, so you get this kind of fun, mild effect. It is absolutely crazy. Um, I am doing absolutely no colour management at all. So it's just whatever two colours come together in the ball come together, um, which means that from square to square, it can vary massively. So like this one is so different to this one which is really really bright and then you can kind of see and then I had one square this one here which was actually quite pastely but next to one square that was quite rainbowy um so it's just really really fun 
Um, I really enjoy, I really love how it's looking. It's going to be one of those blankets that's just really, really ugly, but at the same time, absolutely beautiful. Um, so I'm really looking forward to kind of having this finished, but it's one of those projects that there's no time restriction on it. I'm not rushing to get it done. When it's done, it's done. It doesn't really matter. Um, just every so often when I fancy something a little bit different, which I did this week, I just wanted a break from Christmas knitting. So I sat down and I finished off that square and then joined it on. Um, and it's just quite nice and relaxing, really. Um, as I said, I've got, I'm getting towards the end of these two magic knot balls. But I have got two more giant magic knot balls um, ready to go. Um, and actually these are a very similar size to how these started out. And these two balls have done the entirety of this so far. So it, the yarn goes a decent way, actually. Um, but yeah, that's my Mild Mayhem blanket. I'm not following a pattern of any kind. I've literally just made it up. Um, but it's a really, really fun project. And it's just, I don't know what it is. I, it's hard. I know there's, there were some people out there who will be going, oh my goodness, I can't cope with the randomness of that colour. I need to manage the colours, you know, and stuff like that. But even squares like, like this one, you know, it's absolute chaos. You've got such a range of colours in there, but I just love kind of when you look closely at the marling and you just see all those different colours working together, even if you get bits where the colours completely clash. It's really, really fun. And it's really nice to kind of see that effect as you're crocheting it up as well. Anyway, that's my Mild Mayhem blanket. I've not been working on my blankets very much recently. Um, I think it's because there's been a lot of Christmas gift knitting going on and things like that. Um, but I miss them. I do miss working on my blankets. So hopefully in the new year, I'll get some time to pick those up. Right, what was next? Advent plans. Um, yeah, I was just going to chat about advent plans, really, because there were four things I'm thinking of making throughout Advent. First of all is the gnome. Um, there is a mystery gnome from Sarah of Imagined Landscapes, and that's got to happen. I mean, you can see I am a fan of her mystery gnomes. <laughs> and if you've watched the podcast regularly, you'll know that that's true. And um, for the last mystery gnome, this one here... Um, I hosted a chatter thread in the Ravelry group just just for fun. There was nothing, no kind of um, actual make along entries or anything like that. It was just a chatter thread because the Imagined Landscapes chatter thread can get very overwhelming. It gets very, very busy and there's a lot of chatter in there. Um, so I set one up in my Ravelry group just for those of us watching the podcast who um, wanted to chat basically and share our gnome progress and that was really fun so I've done that again for the advent gnome so if anybody wants to pop over to that thread in the Ravelry group it's completely spoilers are allowed so share your progress share your colours everything like that it is all ready to go um, and we can just chat about the advent gnome um, I have picked my colours with the help of Arthur um, he loves pink at the moment so we he we have picked these four colours. Um, so I think this grey is going to be the beard. And then this is my dark colour. And then these two are my kind of um, in the middle colours. Um, I don't quite know. I don't quite know where it's going to go because obviously the gnome is a mystery. But they are my colours. Um, and that's all ready to go for tomorrow. Because I assume the first clue will be released tomorrow. And then I have got three advent calendars this year. I think I've talked about them on last week's episode and I'll certainly be sharing them on the Vlogmas episode, the Vlogmas video that goes up today. Um, I have got a, an advent from Spectrum Fibres, which is one that I purchased. Um, and for that, I'm thinking of making the Cupid's Arrow Wrap which is a brand new pattern. It was only released on Saturday by Ellie Jones of Craft House Magic. Um, I have been watching um, her podcast. She shared it a couple of times on the podcast and I've been waiting for it to come out because I think it's just the kind of thing I want to do. I'm going to change the pattern up a little bit. Um, she's got lots of adaptations. So you can do it with 12 20 gram minis, 10, no, 12 20 gram minis, 24 10 gram minis or 24 20 gram minis. Um, I'm going to do the 24, 
the 2410 gram minis version um, but I think I'm going to omit the lace sections and I'm just going to do the whole the garter stitch sections the whole way through so it's just going to be a really squishy garter, garter stitch wrap it's also going to be quite simple and quite mindless to knit throughout advent if I get chance to um, and I'll also have leftovers from the 20 gram advent calendar to make other things with um, so that's my plan for that advent calendar and then um, we, I've got an advent calendar from Henny Penny Makes, her pantomime themed advent calendar this year. We um, swapped advent calendars and um, she's got one of mine and I've got one of hers. So that I'm going to make a big crochet blanket with. I think it's a 20 gram. I haven't double checked. I think it's a 20 gram advent calendar. And what I'm thinking is making four squares out of the, out of the mini each day. And then um, I'll do eight, a blanket that's eight by 12. Yeah, eight by 12. I worked this all out last night. So a blanket that's eight by 12 and the first row will be colours one and two alternating. The second row will be colours three and four and then five and six, etc. cetera, um, down the blanket. And um, that's my plan. So I think I'm just gonna do really simple granny squares um, and then I'll work out. So throughout Advent, I'll make a start on crocheting up the granny squares, but I'll work out what colour I'm gonna join them with come January once all the crochet once all the squares are crocheted up. And then finally, I haven't quite decided how I'm gonna do this one, whether it's gonna use the scraps of the Spectrum Fibres Advent Calendar or whether it's gonna use the minis from my Advent Swap package. Um, I took part in the Lay Family and Yarn Swap. Lay Family, I always say that, Lay Family and Yarns. It's because she used to do a Lay Family Yarn and Friends mini skein club. So that always kind of comes out. Um, Kelly of Lay Family Yarns hosts an advent swap every year and I talked about this last week but I took part again this year um, so I may use the minis that come from the advent swap to make the heart and mitts which is a pattern by Helen Stewart it's one of her knit vent patterns for this year and it's a pair of fingerless mitts that uses the 24 colours um, it's really simple and you use such little yarn. Um, I might do that with those. It just depends on kind of the minis that are in the swap package. So we will see. So that is my advent plans. Um, I am trying to give myself zero pressure this year and I am not planning on completing any of these projects during advent. Last year, I knit my dust of snow wrap using the Spectrum Fibres cal cal calendar throughout advent. Um, and I'd finished. I finished it on Christmas day. And that was really fun and really lovely, but I I know that this year is going to be more stressful and there's a lot more going on in December. Um, so I am not giving myself that level of pressure. <laughs> right, we're nearly there. Final thing. Some more tea. No, final thing is shop news. I have got a shop update on the 5th of December. Um, I will have quite a few things. Let me just move my show notes. Try not to jog the camera while I do it. There we go. Um, I've got quite a lot going in the shop update, actually. So first of all, I will have some stripes. Um, it's the same colours that were in the last shop update. So there'll be some more Grandma's Christmas tree, some more Yuletide, some more Frosted and some more Robin Redbreast. Um, and hopefully, if I get them all wound in time, there will be the same number again. So that will be that. This is probably the last festive stripes update of the year. The next stripes update will be, I haven't quite worked it out, possibly the end of January. And that will be more of a Valentine's themed stripe update. I have also got some more scrappy boxes. I have actually got some of it here. I've got some more festive scrappy boxes. They are different to the last ones because obviously my scrappy boxes are always one of a kind. Um, but these are the minis for the next scrappy box. So you've got kind of um, a festive speckle, um, a red, um, a green, um, another speckle and then another one that is green and reds um i need to get these minis all skeined up but yep that is the festive the next festive scrappy box because they sold out very quickly and they were very popular um so i thought i would do a few more um i will hopefully have um another batch of little women minis as well i the yarn is all dyed 
Um, but I dye them as 100 gram skeins, those ones. So um, I just need to find some time this week to break the minis down into minis, break the 100 gram skeins down into minis. But hopefully I will have some more little women minis as well. Um, I have also done a gradient minis. Um, if you if you followed the shop for a while, you will know um, that uh, last year, goodness, I don't know. Yeah, it must be last year. I used to do gradient mini bundles. Um, I'm trying to find other colours. I used to do gradient mini bundles as like a monthly series of minis. So I have picked one of those. Let's see if I can show you this properly. And these were the ones that were released in August. They were initially called August Sunsets. Um, but they're kind of a red, a pink to burgundy through red, if that makes sense. Um, so there we go. So there's the gradient. Um, and it, they're 20 gram minis and you get the three. Three of them are kind of semi-solid and then two of them are subtly speckled. Um, this doesn't really show them off to the best. I will get pic there'll be pictures and everything on Instagram and stuff like that. Um, but yeah, they seemed the most festive ones. So I thought they made me think of Christmas. So I've got some of those. And then more minis. Seems some mini madness at the moment. I've also dyed up a very limited number, but if they all sell out, then I will do some more again for January um of my rainbow minis and i've not dyed these in absolutely ages there'll only be five bundles of these but there are six six minis six 20 gram minis in each bundle and they are sort of subtly speckled so you can see there the purple's got purple speckles the blue's got blue speckles um so you've got red orange yellow green blue and purple so i will have some of those as well going into the shop are they dry Yes, they are. They can go in that box too. Um, yeah, that's everything, I think. <laughs> um, that is everything. Um, what was I going to say? Like, I haven't really got anything to share life newsy, really. No more news on anything that I talked about last week. Arthur, as I said, is still off school for a few days. We're hoping he'll be going back to school this week. He's coping really well with the treatment that he's going through at the moment. And yeah, he's he's managing all right. A little bit emotional every so often, but that's to be expected, isn't it? Especially when you're only seven. Um, but yeah, that's everything. So I will leave you with this slightly rushed, frantic podcast. Apologies for that. Um, but there will be more videos on the channel this month, as I've said, um, with Vlogmas as well. And um, I will try and keep up with the podcasts as well as Vlogmas, because I know there's some of you that prefer the podcasts and aren't a big fan of daily vlogs. But I also know there's some of you that love daily vlogs. Right. Thank you very, very much for watching. And I will talk to you all again very soon. Bye.